Okay, so we're moving along in the work over here at Bechira. We're going to see a new commentary today. And these are the words of the Shlah HaKadosh. He's known that way for his famous sefer that he wrote, Shnei Luchas Habris. But his name really was Rav Yeshaya Horowitz from Hungary, I believe, originally. And he ended up emigrating to Austria. And then from Austria, he ended up in Eretz Yisrael. Svas, and he's buried in Tavaria. He's a very famous grave right near where the Rambam is. So, Harav Yishai Horowitz, Halevi, from the, the 1500s to the 1600s, he says like this, and he goes, he brings in some new ideas over here. If we haven't seen enough yet, he brings in some new ideas. And he says, Let, let's think about the following. The Torah says that there's a mitzvah called a ma'aka, or ma'aka, which is that if you have a roof and people go and they use that roof for their activities, sometimes they, do, they would do the laundry up there, they would use it as a playground, they use it for different things, it's very dangerous. A person could fall off the roof and therefore there's a mitzvah to put a fence called a ma'aka, there's a mitzvah to put a fence around the roof so that people don't fall. So the, the Torah says like this, V'asisa ma'aka l'gagecha, make a fence around your roof, so you should not have blood spilled in your house. Because the one that is supposed to fall, will fall. Meaning, in order that the one that's supposed to fall won't fall, you should put up a, uh, you should put up a fence around your, around your um, roof so that he will not be able to fall. Okay, so that's what the Gemara says. Um, so that's what the Torah says. The Torah says that the one who falls... That's how, the, how we translate it in English. You should make sure you put up a fence around your roof so that the one who falls will not fall. So what does that mean? The Gemara says, so the Gemara says on these words, The, the one who falls. This person who is on your roof, he was fitting to fall from the six days of creation, I meaning it was destined already from the six days of creation that one day there's going to be a man on your roof and he should really be falling. So it says the Torah, so don't let him fall. Put up a fence around your roof so that he will not fall. So the obvious difficulty over here that the Shlaw is going to bring out is that if this person has a destiny to fall off the roof, that's what it sounds like the Gemara is saying over here, that the one that the one that will fall, the one that is falling, the one that will fall, and that's his destiny. So then if you put a fence around the roof, but his destiny was that he's going to fall off the roof, so then what does it matter if you have a fence up there? You don't have a fence over there. Hashem already decreed from six days of creation that he should fall. If, if that fall is foreseen from the time of creation, surely it, it will occur no matter what attempt is made to prevent it. So the Shlah is bothered by over here that it's very hard to understand. If the Torah is telling me that this person is going to fall, would I have to put up a fence to make sure that he doesn't fall? But if he was already supposed to fall and it was decreed from the six days of creation that this guy on that day, on that roof, is going to fall off and he's going to die, so then what does it matter whether I put up a fence or I don't put up a fence? If a Kodesh Baruch already decreed from the six days of creation he's going to fall off and die, then he should. So what's going on over here? So the Shla explains that this that HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows everything that's going to take place in advance, He knows all of the options that could take place in advance. He knows all that could occur, but what will in fact occur and what might have occurred, I'm sorry, He knows all that could occur, what will in fact occur, and what might have occurred. So he knows, he sees there's, there's behind door number two and there's behind door number three. He knows exactly what's over there. So if you pick door number three, you win, you win the grand prize. If you pick door number two over there, you get nothing. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows what is hiding behind every door. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows if you choose this, you're going to go in this direction. If you choose this, you're going to go in that direction. He knows all that might occur. He knows all that will occur, and he knows what could have occurred. His knowledge is his will, 
And his will contains all, even when you have opposites that are paradoxical. Let's explain a little bit more of you to understand. But basically, the premise that he's saying right now is, is that Hashem knows all of the options that could happen before they actually happen. Now, what exactly is going to happen is going to be based upon your Bechira, which choice you, you choose. Meaning, even though that we have choices, the Shlaw is making it sound like there's only a certain number of choices that a person actually has. And Hashem knows if you choose this, it's going to create this effect. And Hashem knows if you choose this, it's going to create that effect. And so on and so forth. And therefore Hashem sees it all. Yet, you still can decide what you want to do with the Bechira in your hands. So he knows in advance what can happen as uh, what can happen as potential, because the Gemara says over there by this person, um, he was roy, he was fit to fall from the times of the six days of creation, and later when an event transpires through the expression of human free will, he knows actually what is taking place. So before the Bechira, Kodesh Baruch Hu knew what could happen. Once that it happens, he knows actually what happened. And again, we'll have to see because it's still going to be somewhat problematic. So does he know everything in advance? He doesn't know everything in advance? So let's see. So the Shla wants to bring some proofs to what he's saying. Number one, the Gemara says over here, that the, the Gemara says, Roy Zelipo This person who we're building a fence for, so he shouldn't fall off the roof. He was Roy, he was fit to fall off of the off of the wall off of the, the roof from the beginning of creation. Which means that it's not the one that will certainly fall, but if everything would work out in the wrong way, I guess we'll say it, then he in fact would fall. So that person was to fall. Hashem knew that. But the person's dispensation could change and he would not have fallen and God knew that too. Meaning since that if we build a fence right now around the roof, then it's going to protect you and you're not going to fall. Or let's say that it was already seen in the beginning of time that on Tuesday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in Alabama, you're going to be on a rooftop and you're going to fall off. Let's say that you changed your mind and you didn't go to Alabama and you're not there on the rooftop on Tuesday at 2 o'clock. So therefore, even though that from the beginning of time, it's very possible that this is what was going to happen, but there are elements in your life that can change along the way. There are decisions that you are going to make that is part of the possibility context over here, which means not only is there the potential that you're going to fall, there's also the potential that you're going to be guarded and you're not going to fall. And that says, the Shla, that's really up to you. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows in advance everything that could happen. He knows all the choices that are there and the results of what those choices are going to be. Nevertheless, and notwithstanding, you have free will. And since you have free will, you will decide what you're going to do and therefore it will bring one of those choices and the results into play. Says the Shla further. Um, so, and Hashem knew all, of, He knew all the choices that were there. But in advance, the knowledge was in potential form. Now this is the, this is the, the Chiddush, this is the idea, the, the new idea that he's, he's presenting. And that is, when we say that HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows everything before it's going to happen, because He has idea, He has foreknowledge, says the Shla, that knowledge was only in potential form. And later, after it actually takes place, then it's muqsak, it's in actual form. So Hashem knows everything before it's going to happen, but the Shla is saying He only knows the potential of what could take place because there's so many different options that could actually happen. So therefore He does know, of course, but he doesn't yet know exactly what's going to happen because that's going to be up to you and your free will. So that's, that line is a hard line to say. So let's just keep it in mind right now. We'll see where we get. The, he, has, he brings down a lot of ideas from the Shlom. Secondly, he says, we have a very famous passage in the Torah. 
that tells us that when Avram Avinu went through the challenge of the Akedah, which is when he took his son Yitzchak up to the mountain and he was ready to shecht him, to slaughter him on the altar. And at the very last minute, the angel or Hashem calls out, Avram, Avram, al tishlach yodcha al anar, don't send your hand out with the knife against the child, stop. And Avram Avinu stops, on, the, on, the, on a dime he stops, and he doesn't shecht his son. So the Torah says over there, HaKadosh Baruch Hu proclaims to, to Avram, Ato Yudati, now I know. Now that, again, the, the translation that normally is written in English is, Ato Yudati ki yira now I know that you are a God-fearing person. I mean, I didn't know it before, um, so that's why I tested you to show how great your fear of God is, that you're willing to even take your son, your only son, the one you love so much, bring him on the altar and shecht him. So Atta Yadati, now I know what a great man of, of, uh, of, fear, of, of awe and fear of Hashem you are. However, that's not the grammar. The grammar is Atta Yadati, now I knew. Now I knew that you are a God-fearing person. What do you mean now you knew? It's now I know. So the Shla explains over there, no. Now I knew, now it's actual. Now I knew what, now I know what I always knew in potential. I always knew in potential, Avram, that you are the greatest man in the generation and you would do anything that I ask you. I always knew that if I would offer you the opportunity to come and take your son and check him on the altar, you would listen to me. That was the choice that you were given, you would make the right choice. But of course there were other options. You could have said it's too much for me. You could have not gone up the mountain. You could have called in sick that day and not come to work. You could have done all that. Now that I see that you actually went forward and you did what, what I asked you to do, after you dati, now I know what I always knew from beforehand. And therefore it says the Shla, if you look at it in that way, then you understand very clearly. You understand that when we say that HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows everything in advance, it means that He knows all of the options that exist in advance, and that's all in the potential, the world of potential of what, <coughs> what you might end up doing later on down the road, when you actually make the decision and the choice and you follow through with it, so then whatever decision was in potential now becomes reality, now becomes actual. So the Shla is introducing a way to understand Hashem's foreknowledge and our free will, but He is saying, and again, we're, gonna, we're not going to see it today, but we have, we have much more to discuss in the Shla. We are going to see over there that how is it going to work? So did He really know or He doesn't know? He's fully aware or He's not fully aware? He knows what you're going to do, but that's the Shla saying. He doesn't know exactly what you're going to do. He knows what you could do, he knows all the choices that are in front of you. And if you'll make this choice, it's going to work out like this. If you make this choice, it's going to work out like this. If you make this choice, he already sees into the future what's going to be over there. And therefore, he knows, but it's up to you to decide which one of the choices you are going to take in your life. Okay, we're going to stop over here. And uh, you get off for good behavior, for coming to learn anyway, even if we're not in person today. I really appreciate it. And uh, God willing, we'll see you next week. I guess we'll have to see what the, wane, the, the rain is going to be like on Monday. If it's a pouring day, then we'll be on Zoom. If it's not a pouring day, then hopefully we'll be in person. Be'ez Hashem. Feel better, Rabbi. Amen. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Good Shabbos, everyone.